Well, it's been 25 years in the making. For the first time since 1987, the Women's National Basketball League Grand Final is an all-Victorian affair. Berlin are the reigning champions and have one of the country's biggest superstars on their roster. Their opponents, Dandenong, have a wave of momentum behind them after eight straight wins. Simon Conway caught up with the two coaches to talk tactics, teamwork and titles. All right, guys, well, thanks very much for uh, joining us. We're a few days out now from the, uh, the big one. Both seasoned uh, basketball coaches, how are the, uh, how are the nerves a few days out? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely feeling nerves. I'm sure I'm feeling a bit more than Tom, seeing he's only about his 44th grand final. This is my first, so um, no, definitely, start, definitely starting to get pumped up. I try, I try not to worry about it until I, I figure it's going to come around, you know. And I, I don't want to get myself into a state, so I, I try not to worry about it. And Tom, you were involved in a, an all-Victorian grand final uh, 25 years ago. It's the first one since then. Is there, what, what are your recollections of that day back in 1987? I remember we were seven down with seven minutes to go. And we thought we'd better not hold back and we, we unleashed our presses and I think we probably won by about seven. So I remember that was a, a, a good lesson for me not to wait too long. It was like, wow, thank God that worked, you know. Oh, hey, says that she can answer. And this being a, a local derby, does it add any extra spice to the, to the game? Uh, in some ways, but I mean, the players have played in so many different clubs and you know, quite frankly, it's a, it's a coup for us. I mean, uh, we make more money if Adelaide, if we dandle and play at home than at Adelaide, you know, they're not going to fly over. So, so it was a coup for us. So just financially, we were hoping Daniel were going to win. And Mark? Oh, you know, uh, we don't make any money out of it. So, you know, <laughs> we just wanted to make the grand final. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just excited about the whole prospect, really. But Adelaide's defensive transition was pretty good, but and we touched on the nerves earlier. How much of a role do you guys play in minimising the nerves of your players? Or is, is that something you try to do? Do you just let them go with the flow this week? I'm sure Tom's got a strong philosophy on it. You know, um, I, I'm happy to learn from Tom through this whole process. But, you know, we're just trying to keep it as normal as possible and just do what we do every week. And the routine we've stuck to certainly over the last six or eight weeks has worked for us. And we're just trying to replicate that. Yeah, I think that's about right. I think you've got to... You've got to build to a point, and I think if you're going to try and invent something in the last week or make some monumental, motivating statement or gimmick, I think you, that's just, you're fooling yourself. I think you've just got to stay with what you do. And that just gives you so much belief. Alison Downey! Mark, you, you mentioned eight weeks, an eight-no run that you're on. What happened eight weeks ago to turn this around? Uh, well, we were in a, we a uh, do-or-die clash with Sydney, up in Sydney, and uh, I always felt, you know, as the season was going on, that game was looming strong because Sydney and us were, were pretty much going head-to-head -head all the way through the season with wins and losses. So uh, when that game came up, it was a, I, I felt the team that lost that probably might drop out, and as it turned out, Sydney did, did get in, but um, it was gonna, always going to be an important game, and uh, we got down by 16 early in the third, and um, I have to say the leaders... The leaders of the group, you know, uh, Kathleen and Jenna and and, uh, and Co, stepped up, and uh, I think it was the first game, the first game I'd seen Jenna decide that we weren't gonna, you know, that she was gonna make sure that we didn't lose that game. And I think it was a massive turning point for us. But I think I think a lot of players bought in after that game and decided that's that's the uh, the tack we were going to take and the road, the path we were on. So I, I think we moved forward from then. It was a decisive game for sure for us. And Tom was Danny on on your radar six seven weeks ago. Yeah, I thought they were in trouble, you know, like I actually spoke to Mark about it once, we just had a chat, and their season was definitely on the line, and um, you couldn't, they couldn't have stood up better, could they, you know, it's, um, I think that's the scariest thing about Dan on, is, is their momentum, and the fact that they've got some, you know, really good leadership there. So how important is, is momentum then, coming into, you know, a one-off great? It's huge. I think, I think there's things that historically show, you know, what's necessary to win grand finals. And one of those things is you're not losing games prior to the final starting, you know. Um, I'm, I think we didn't have that, but I thought we got it in the semi-final. Yeah, I don't think we could have had a better preparation. And, you know, I think you need a little bit of luck, um, even with results and, and teams that maybe we would have struggled to have struggled to beat during the year. 
um, not making the, the top five. I think all teams need a little bit of luck and, and and you make your own luck, obviously. And I think um, you know the momentum is a, is a big thing. I think we've got plenty of it. We're, pl we're very confident. And um, you know, I don't th I don't think there's there hasn't been any excuse for us. Uh, this will be our ninth elimination game in a row. And uh, so coming into this game, I think our mindset is you know what the hell. You know, we, we've we've done this eight times in a row. We, we might as well just keep going. Harrington, she was on fire. Throughout that 40 minutes or, you know, the four quarters of the, the grand final, how much impact or direct impact do you guys as coaches feel that you have on the outcome of the game? A one-off match? Well, basketball is like, a base, even though a Canadian invented it, but it's basically an American sport. And a lot of those American sports are really coach-driven. You know, um, their, top, their style of football, baseball, um, you know, there, there's a... The rules are slanted. In fact, you know, in college and etc., the, the the coaches get a big say in how the rules are a uh, are, are play. So, it is a it's a coach-driven sport more than other sports. But in the end, I kind of think it's always. I think a, a, a coach's performance is as good as a good sixth man. I reckon. You know, I think that probably weighs it up. But you, it's not as anywhere near as good as the, the players do well. But I think it it can make a contribution like a like a good sixth man can. Well, I'd have to say since we since we um, had our turnaround, I'm probably doing having less uh, less influence on the on the team or on the players than than the players are having on themselves. I'd like I, I can clearly see that my input has has been less because the players are, are driving this themselves. 13 to 12 is Phillips. Oh! From deep. Oh! Uh, well, Tom's got me. He's got me. Uh, I don't think I've ever beaten Tom. Um, it's only been a couple of years. In the old days, I was out of the game before Mark came in, so there wouldn't be that many games. It'd be a handful of games. But that, you know, it's it's. We, I, I don't even think about last year. I mean, he, Tom beat us three times last year, and you know, obviously went forward and had a tremendous year and won the championship. And uh, I don't think we were ever in a position last year to to beat them at any stage of those three games. We were, I think, we were comprehensively beaten in the whole three games. In the three games this year, I think the first two games definitely could have gone either way. And um, one of them being an overtime, overtime victory to Berlin. And the third game, I thought we, we never really had a chance to held a 10 point lead for most of the game. So, you know, out of the three games, I think we've been, you know, seriously felt like we lost one and the other two, Berlin won, but we felt we had a chance. So what's the key to, to getting them? Oh, well, you know, Tom might, Tom might play down his influence uh, as a coach, but he, that, this team executes their offense tremendously well. They've got a six foot eight centre that's world class. That's that's hard to stop on, on a bad game for her. Is you know, bad game is you know 15 points and 10 rebounds. I mean, yes, she, she's going to influence what what goes on and and how how we negate that will certainly uh, help us you know get to where we want to go. But clearly, you can't you can't throw all your all your numbers at Liz Cambridge because they've got too many good players that uh, that'll feed off that so they've got people who know how to you know to, to get in the lanes and steal the ball they've got perimeter shooters I mean that's why they're they're where they are that being said and done I don't think you know we're not fearing that we, we're just respecting that if you haven't covered it now what are you doing you know are you are you going to give them the secret and by the way here's the secret of life you know I mean I think you've got to be prepared so you know, I don't know about the big message with 10 seconds to, to go before you go out there. I mean, I think I think people talk generally f from the heart in those situations, but the main thing is is that you're prepared. How will she respond aggressively? I actually want Tom to keep going about what he was preparing for. That would have been interesting just to keep that going a little bit. But um, no, we, we're going to do exactly the same thing we've done. I think that's worked for us. We, we're probably um, preparing less and less, a little bit less information going across than there was maybe six weeks ago. We just try and try and bring them to the game focused, and I, I'm sure it's going to be terribly exciting for them. And, and um, you, you just don't want to add to that uh, overexcitement. We don't want to be overexcited, but we just want to be, you know, hard at it. Oh, well, fantastic, guys. Best of luck, and uh, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Simon Conway with that report, and you can see the match on ABC One on Sunday afternoon.